When children walk through these doors, they expect to enter a safe, friendly learning environment. However, that is not always the case. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention released its 2009 Youth Risk Behavior Survey, or YRBS, which shows that bullying in schools is on the rise. The survey is taken every two years, and it monitors a variety of behaviors, including bullying and harassment in schools. In 2009, 39 percent of middle school and high school students said they had been bullied on school property one or more times in the past year. The percentage rose by 13 percent from 2007 to 2009. The most significant increase occurred in students who said they had been the victim of teasing or name-calling because of their weight, size, or physical appearance during the past month. It rose from 35 percent to 52 percent, an increase of 17 percent from 2007. Fifty-nine percent of the students surveyed said they strongly agree that bullying and harassment by other students is a problem in their school. Bullying in schools has received a lot of national media attention over the last few months because many of the cases have had tragic and violent results. For instance, in Massachusetts, Phoebe Prince committed suicide after constant and persistent bullying by six of her classmates. The state of Massachusetts indicted the six students in March. The charges included statutory rape, civil rights violations, and criminal harassment. In Florida, a case involving cyberbullying received extensive media coverage in March. Fifteen-year-old Wayne Tracy stomped Josie Ratley's head with his steel toe boots after the two had exchanged heated remarks over text messages. Locally, the Junction City School District has been dealing with a variety of bullying problems as well. Earlier this year, we talked with a student at Laurel Elementary School in Junction City who said he has been the victim of bullies. Henry McCullough Jr., who goes by Bo, says he has been spit on, pushed, and called names since he began third grade in Junction City last fall. He now hates going to school. It makes me feel mad and triple angry and sad. Sad real I do not ever want to see those kids again. Last time we talked with Bo's mother, Corey, she said she was fed up and planned on talking with the principal or the superintendent. However, McCullough says the principal doesn't return her phone calls and Bo's teacher has been no help. They've come up with excuses. Oh, it's, it was an accident. Oh, he's taking it the wrong way. We've let the other child know that it's not okay. Stephen Smith, a senior analyst at the Institute on Violence and Destructive Behavior, says that this is a common reaction, but urges the parents to keep trying. It's, it's pretty widely uh, acknowledged that uh, kids cannot take care of this kind of problem themselves. It really uh, falls on parents or caregivers to become the advocates for the kids. Jill Case works directly for the superintendent of the Junction City School District. She says the district views bullying as a punishable offense. She defined a bully as... It's when a more powerful person in authority or in uh, your peers, uh, more powerful, perhaps more aggressive, um, uh, puts someone down continually um, and tries to make them fearful. Bo asked for help during school, but it was never given. When, even if I go down to the principal's office. He would just say maybe he did it on accident. Case says teachers in the district do receive training on how to deal with a bullying situation. Uh, what teachers must do is absolutely learn to recognize a bullying that may not be obvious uh, by the way kids uh, react to each other. Smith says this is hard to do because most bullying is done in secret. Most children pass it off as horseplay, but adults must watch for warning signs such as changes in the child's behavior. Since we moved here, he's gotten to where he does not like school. He does not like doing his homework. In the mornings to get him ready to go to school, it's nothing but a fight where before he'd be up and ready to go and booking it out the door. Corey says that she was left with two options. School's supposed to be fun. School's new friends. He's not having fun. He's not making friends. So 
it, like I said, our choices were either homeschool or try a different district. Bo says if things don't get better, he will take matters into his own hands. Next time I would let my fish do all the talking. For Oregon News in Junction City, I'm Amy Burnett.